Uh, the theme of this video is mystics, yogis, sages, and saints, the heart of spiritual religion. I mentioned uh, mystic sages and saints in, in, my, in the last lecture, and I also spoke about uh, the non-dual perspective that I think is the perspective upon which the greatest and most saintly figures converge. I want to say a few words in this, in this final uh, lecture on a theme in, in, the, in world religions about a spiritual persons or holy people or holy persons. Um, I, I gave a whole series of lectures on this with Now You Know Media, and uh, that's available. Uh, and uh, so mystics, yogis, sages, and saints, they are different ways of expressing the vocation of, of, the, of the holy person. Uh, or the saint in our world. Now, I'm not aware of any religious tradition that's truly a religious tradition that is uh, lacking in saints. And I will use the word saint now instead of the others because uh, it's the most general of the categories. Uh, in, in my view, a saint is a person who has perceived the sacred dimension of life and the greater the saint, the more abiding that is that perception. But not only that, the saint is someone who converts that vision into action. And we know that in all the great religious traditions, the greatest saints have been the founders of religious movements, the ones who have re received new revelation or have articulated a path to awakening that, that abides to this day and is, is uh, filled with substance and reality for countless millions and billions of human beings. The saints in many and great traditions are famed for their good works, for their works of mercy, their works of charity, for their efforts at peacemaking, for their concern not just for humans but for, for animals as well, for the whole of creation. And invariably, saints are associated with miracles. And every religious tradition that is really worth talking about has a whole array of miracles. I'm not aware of any religious tradition that does not have miracles associated with its great saints. Um, in fact, we could even take the whole category of religion and put it to the side and simply focus upon saints, upon saintly figures, the great sages, the great yogis, the great mystics, um, and there are so many other terms that can be used. We might ask ourselves, what is the secret of these people, and why is it that they, in fact, are the heart of real religion or spiritual religion? Um, and it's because of their intense focus upon the divine. So let me just say then a, a few words about uh, some of the varieties of saintly figures. Uh, for, uh, so um, uh, in, in my other lectures, I distinguish between the mystic, sage, and saint, and we can think of the mystic as the kind of yogi uh, who is the uh, who has perfected uh, meditation, who has perfected contemplative practices. Uh, the the mystic or or the yogi uh, is able to sit for long periods of time, focused upon the breath, and as a consequence of that focus upon the breath or some other sacred or a sacred reality. What happens is, and this is not often understood or known by people who don't cultivate the spiritual life, and this can be an enticement to do so, is that extraordinary vistas of consciousness begin to open up to the, to the mystic and the yogi. You know, it's because the spiritual philosophies of the world, they remind us that we are not just these bodies. And if I, in fact, my first spiritual teacher, uh, a, a, my first guru, uh, an Indian uh, teacher of sacred wisdom, insisted, and quite, quite surprisingly to us, he would say, you are not your body. <laughs> and this was an extraordinary thing to hear. I'm not my body. If I'm not my body, who am I? Exactly. Without your body, who would you be? Well... Uh, and of course, the question, how you answer that question, says a lot about the metaphysical vision of life that guides you. And I know I'm not this body. I have this body. I use this body uh, because I'm, I'm spirit. That's what I really feel deep within. I am spirit, and this, this body is something that I use as a tool. But, you know, it goes beyond that. It's not just that, that I'm not identified ultimately with this material form. 
But many religious traditions detail the other bodies that we actually have, the, the spiritual bodies, the soul, to use a kind of general term. But if we, in meditation, we begin to experience that we have, a, we have subtle senses and a subtle body that's connected to the realm of the ancestors, that's connected to the realm of the angels and the saints, the devas, the gods, the goddesses, uh, the, 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 the great deities of the world's religious traditions, it's as if all of these entities and beings form an, a, an interlocking universe of subtle golden energy that becomes apparent to the subtle and attuned mind, the mind of the yogi, the mind of the saint. That is one of the great discoveries of deeper meditation, a meditation that goes, goes beyond just a good but elementary concern with de-stressing. In fact, meditation, if you're not careful, can open you up, can op opens a door into the subtle realms of, of the soul and the deeper mind and the spirit. Um, the sage, uh, another type of uh, saintly figure, the sage uh, is uh, that uh, profound philosopher, that person who can see. So the yogi is someone who focuses the mind, but the, the, philosopher, the sage, often a yogi and sometimes a philosopher, is somebody with, the razor sh with a razor-sharp intellect is able to cut through the... Uh, camouflaging ideas that prevent us from experiencing our true spiritual nature and the non-dual holiness that resides at the heart of life. Wow, that's a pretty, I, for me, that's an impressive capacity to be able to cut through my conditioning, my biological conditioning, my socialization, to be able to somehow or other free my consciousness from the uh, shaping power of my nervous system. Now, for some, that will sound like uh, impossible to do because, after all, we are our bodies and my consciousness is just an efflux of my brain. I would suggest that that is a useful way of understanding things. It's limited. It's uh, like understanding uh, my smartphone as as only able to uh, display on the screen its own internal signal. It's not recognizing that the smartphone only really becomes useful when it's able to receive an external signal that it then displays on its screen. And that's how the spiritual, that's how the sage understands the body and the mind as, uh, as, uh, as receiving information that's much broader than that which is available just through the senses and the sense-based mind. And then we, we have the saint. And again, I said this is the broadest of the terms, and I can't spend a lot of time distinguishing saints from the other figures. It is a broad term. It can be used to uh, include all of the other figures. But on the other hand, the saint also has some specific meaning. And the saint is probably the most familiar of these figures. The saint is that person who is, who is so overwhelmed with love for God they can think of nothing else. The saint is that person who is so dedicated to the quest for awakening for, for themselves and for others that they dedicate their lives to that. They live a very simple lives, lives of, of celibacy perhaps in many traditions, lives of poverty uh, and of few possessions, focusing only upon the, uh, the development of those uh, skills that can allow allow them to give the gift of, of deathlessness, of immortality, of ultimate fulfillment to the people around them. Um, the great saints are known for their great works of charity, for their, for their great works of the intellect, and every tradition is filled with saints. So as a concluding point, uh, I would like to say that as a pluralist, it's important to keep in mind that just as prayer is owned by no religious tradition and prayer is a universal phenomenon of human life, whether people pray or not, so is sanctity, so is saintliness. Saintliness comes in as many forms as religions, as our religions, and it comes in, 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 in quirky forms, non-institutional forms. Thomas Merton uh, loved to speak about the kind of non-institutional quirky forms of monasticism that he foresaw rising in the future.
The saint does not need to be within a religious tradition because saints, the greatest of the saints, have been the founders or reformers of religions. They've created new religious movements. And I fully expect, given that saints are not limited to any religion, that our universe, our history, has yet to see the countless saints that are still on our horizon.